Yeah, they'll, they'll sometimes come up and squash it. This was a smaller fish that grabbed it on a jumbo minnow. He came up, you see all the scales are gone, comes up and grabs this, and then the, and then the hook's all twisted around because he had them inside his mouth. But uh, a big old minnow almost did his job. <laughs> almost. I wasn't even paying attention I'd, to that one. I'd hate to be a minnow. We'll put, him back, we'll put him back in the rehab tank, but that poor guy got bit on. You can see where, you can see where that striper came up and grabbed the outside and raked all his scales off of him. It was his lucky day. There was fish in there. I mean, that minnow got nervous. That minnow got nervous. They were, they were right on their tails, but the, the, the stripers were a little spooked. We, we got to give them 10, 15 minutes. We'll go back up above another spot. We're going to go try another spot real quick, and then we'll come back through them and give them a second to rest. I like to get a lively minnow. If you can get a lively minnow, those stripers like it when he's alive. That's a good size one there. He'll get a good one. And just take that hook. Your rod. Take that hook, and I like to go again from the bottom up to the top. Right through the bottom jaw, right through the top, right in between the nose there, but not up in the head. And then he'll hang like that. Drop him in the water. He's ready to go. See how lively he is? That's what you want in your minnow. You want a lively minnow. Stripers love to chase. They love to chase it. He's swimming already out of there. There's one. Take your time, take your time. You got it? Okay, all right. Okay, looks like he's going around the outside there. I mean, just kind of walk around to the, up towards the front. There, lift up on that one, lift up on him, right? Lift, lift up. You got him. All right, all right. Is he still, is he still on? Okay. Oh, nice fish. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice one. Nice one, nice one. We'll just drop them right on the floor. Nice job. I looked over there and he was bending down, huh? He's fighting you pretty good. Yeah. They always do all their all their fighting when they get close, you know, isn't that neat? They'll, Last this effort. Yeah. And then use the use a rod tip and just lift up for me. Got him. All right. Nice job. Nice job. That's fun when it does that. Okay. That's what we call controlled chaos. And I love it. <laughs> when you do two or three or four on on one drift, that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. He's 18. Tip to tip. Another one getting that tank too. All right, we already got him. Perfect. The boat gets messy. And we like it. Put that on that side. What do we got? We got eight in there. Okay. Okay. You know the technique that I showed you earlier on the slider. 
on there. A lot of guys will use a three-way, like out on the bay, and for halibut or for stripers, they just use a three-way, and then they use what we call a dropper, a dropper weight. And then they bounce on the bottom, that keeps their minnow up. That's a great way to do if you're just gonna drift. But when you're trolling with a current speed, you can also use a dropper, but it's just one more thing that you don't need to have. I do mine direct mainline, and that way you just lift them up with a, with a kicker motor, you just watch what you're doing. Some guys really like the droppers. Some guys really like it, and they do are very successful with them. So you can do both. The three-way is a very valid uh, technique with a dropper on it or a main line like I do. But either way, the main thing is you gotta get it close to the bottom. You gotta get that bait somewhere close to the bottom and keep it moving. But when you're drifting, if the main line goes down, you break off your whole rig. On a dropper rig, the, the neat thing about a dropper on a three-way you just break off the sinker and you still got your hook and everything. So if you mainline it, you've always got to be on top of the motor all the time. If you let off, you'll hook up and then you got to retie everything. Even like we've had to do a couple times because it's wind today. So they're both, you know, valid techniques and they're both very productive. I like the mainline. I think it's faster. I can, I can regulate the height much faster. But guys who drift uh, definitely like the three ways a lot better. A three way is you just a three-way swivel, and on the bottom swivel, tie a dropper line, put it down a foot, and then put your weight there. You know, this is how important a good graph is. You know, we're 11 foot of water, and yet we're only four or five feet from the bank. This big back eddy hole here. Now, we didn't get anything out of here. We came through here, had a couple nervous minnows, but spots like this can sometimes, I mean, can make or break your whole day. You come and do a little back eddy like this. If it's loaded with stripers, you drop it down, bam, 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 you got fish on right away. So these spots are really cool. So just because you're right up next to the bank doesn't mean that's a bad spot. Sometimes it can be really good. Again, your electronics will tell you where we're at. We're at 11 feet of water and the nose of the boat is six feet from the bank. So when you look at the bank, when you're looking for spots to fish, Go over there with a fish finder, and if you got a drop off, try it out. Check it out for just a little bit. They'll tell you, stripers will let you know right away. I mean, when we found them, we fished seven or eight spots with nothing. Then we got the eighth spot, bam, 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 bam. They let you know, they bite. There's one, hey, all right, we got one. Just like that, huh? So anyway, we did get one out of there. He's gonna dive underneath. Nice job. Ooh, he's fighting hard. You're okay where you're at, Zane? All right. Just like nice. that. Hey, way to go. Just like that. Yeah. Venom was getting nervous as he took it down. There we go. All right, this spot here, like I said, we're six feet from the bank, 11 foot of water. This fish is a little short, so we're gonna let this one go. But we got some bites, we got lots of fish already. We'll just take them, you can either hand them, or I like to hold them like a bass, you know, like a largemouth bass or something. Just kind of set him down in the water, make sure he's breathing. Make sure he's breathing. And then let him go. So he swims out of your hand and then he's safe and just like that. So cool. Nice job, Frank. Way to go. Way to get one out of there. Always, always on cue is a nice thing. Yeah. They all know this spot next to the bank. Oh, Frank's got one. So that's always good. He let go, he let go. An outside rod.
There he is. That's a fish on there. Fish on there. Fish on. Nice job. Nice. Nice one. Good job. Sometimes will happen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Grab him by the hand. I just unhook him like that. Cool. It's worth it. Pretty fish. Real pretty clean. Shiny. Pretty fish. Real pretty. They do. Yeah. They got spines all over them. They got spines on the top that you got to be careful of because those will stick you. Okay. And then right here on this gillway, right here, super sharp. Both of those. People will grab there and boy, they'll get their hands. And then this one right here. That one's a dandy right there. Oh, yeah. That one there. So you, anywhere you grab them in here, they wiggle, they tear your hands up. That's why normally I use these little grippers, you know, like that. And, and you can grip onto them. Lock that in, and then it doesn't mess up your hands. Your your thumbs look like cauliflower if you grab them like this all the time. The inside here, they don't have big teeth, but it's like sandpaper, and they they grab onto that minnow, you know, and then he can't get away from them. They're they're a they're a fish eating machine. Boy, they're good. That's a pretty one. Nice job. Huh? Way to go. Nice fish. I looked up. I saw him load up, and you waited and tug tug. I right on. You got him. Well, I'll tell you, the, the day started off, we had, what do we have, 20 mile an hour south winds, it's still blowing right now. We're up here on the Sacramento River in late May. Boy, the, the, the way it started out, we had one keeper in the morning, about the first hour, we had to find them. But after we found them, it, it turned out pretty good. You know, we had two or three doubles. See the winds blow like that, we didn't have ideal conditions at all. Everybody got enough fish to take home for limits. So everybody who was fishing got limits, so that was good. You know, we didn't get the big one. We didn't get that 20, 25 pound hand today, and, and it would have been nice to see that on film, of course, but we want that every day, but that, hey, that's how it goes. But at least we got fish, and there wasn't too many boats out. There was three or four other guys out. They all got limits, so the fish is still going pretty strong. So that's a good thing. So all in all, any day you can get out is great, number one. Any day you can catch a limit, number two, is even better. Any day, you know, you can beat the conditions in a heavy wind, uh, especially a south wind, uh, and still catch plenty of fish. We got tons of snags, uh, lots of snags that we thought were big fish, but they weren't. And, um, but overall, it turned out pretty good. 